Okay, so this is the $99 GameSir X3 mobile game controller. So this has a USB-C port on here, so it's made for Android phones, and it also has a built-in fan on the back to help keep your phone cool while you are gaming. Now, when you first get this controller and start unwrapping it, you will find that it does come in this very nice and convenient carrying case. So you can take the controller with you on the go, and you can use this Velcro strap here to strap it down and keep it very nice and secure. And also inside of this case, you will find some other things, including these these additional accessories for the controller. So you get two additional thumbsticks and the ones that are inside of the case are going to be taller than the ones that come on the controller, which is nice. And you also get two additional sets of thumbstick caps. So these are gonna go on the original thumbsticks, which personally, the ones that come already on the controller are too small for me for an adult hand. So they could be good for just, you know, kids or people with smaller hands. But these thumbstick caps just give you a wider surface area to be able to control the thumbsticks. And uh, one set is going to be concave and one set is going to be convex. So depending on your personal taste, you can choose between those. And then the last thing will be an additional D-pad here, kind of like the satellite dish D-pad that you find on the Xbox Elite controller. Now, as far as how the buttons and the triggers and the thumbsticks and all these things feel, they don't feel cheap. That's the number one important thing that I was worried about with any type of game controller, but that's not the case here with this X3. Everything feels really good. Look, I'm not super technical. I'm not gonna pull off anything to really show you how the, the travel is on the thumbsticks and stuff, but I have watched some other people's videos where they said that it's, it's generally accurate. Some things can be kind of fine-tuned, but for the most part, on the way these buttons and triggers feel, I think most people will be happy with. But really the main adjustment that I did in almost every single app, especially like a first-person shooter, is just to go in and turn the sensitivity of the thumbsticks down just a little bit. So I just felt that they were a little too sensitive, but uh, for me, I like it to be a little bit slowed down, but I'm not a competitor gamer, so maybe you like it sped up. Uh, but that's really the only thing that I had to do to get really comfortable with the, the controls. Now you do have two additional customizable buttons on this controller. So you have a G and an S button. So G for game, S for sir. Uh, then also you do have a screenshot button on the bottom left, and then you have a home button on the bottom right. And as I mentioned before, you do have your right and left triggers and also your right and left shoulder buttons. Now, one of the big selling points of this controller is just how easy it is to put your phone in and take your phone out of it. So the controller itself does expand like this to match your phone size, but also the USB-C connector does tilt up and down. So it tilts up and down. So when you do go to take your phone, like my really big Galaxy S22 Ultra here, I can tilt the phone up like this and I'm not worried about the you know connector breaking off in my phone. And then now I can place the phone in the controller like so. So it's very easy to do. You'll be surprised how many controllers have a very rigid connector and I'm always concerned about breaking it, but um, this is the best solution that I've seen so far. Oh, and if you are wondering whether or not your phone will fit, as you can see that big S22 Ultra will fit, but also the big Pixel 6 Pro. And also I put the Pixel 6a inside of here. I put a Samsung phone, I put a nothing phone inside of here. All these phones went in with no problem. And even yes, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 does fit in the expanded mode. But as you can see, because of the placement of the USB-C port on the right hand side, the Z Fold 4 has to sit lower than what I would want inside of this dock. And really the only remedy for this would be for or game to actually allow you to be able to move the USB-C port to the other side of the phone. Uh, but I doubt they'll do that for this unique case, but that's definitely on my wish list. Oh, and speaking of cases, I did have to take all of the cases of my phones off in order to use them with this controller. And that's because the USB-C connector just needed a little bit more space to connect to the phone. And so unless you have one of those very super thin cases that don't really add any drop protection, maybe just for looks or just for some like scratch protections, there is a decent chance that you will have to take your case off to use your phone with this controller. But now let's talk about this fan on the back. So this fan has to be powered by a USB-C cable. So um, on the bottom of it, you will find a USB-C port. So you need to plug in a USB-C cable in there and one does come with the uh, controller. And then now you see the fan lights up and this is an RGB fan, obviously. So it adds a little color to your gaming setup. And also it is a seven blade fan that does run at 7,500 RPM. And this fan does make a little bit of noise, so definitely when I am using the fan, I wanna put in some, some earbuds or wear some headphones, but I'm gonna be quiet for a second so you can hear how the fan sounds.
And so, yeah, the fan does make some noise, but it's not going to wake anybody up out of their sleep. But GameSir says that when you do have this fan running, it can shave off up to 24 degrees off of the temperature of your phone, and that is in Celsius. So that is a good thing. And again, I don't typically game for you know, four or five hours on end, and I am using some of the latest phones like the Snapdragon S22 Ultra and things that, that already have really good cooling. So I didn't use the fan that often for my particular needs, but if you are running an older phone that maybe doesn't have a chipset that's, you you know, really rated to be able to handle these high loads on your phone without getting really hot, um, this fan can definitely help you out. And I do want to be clear that this isn't some cheap trick. Like the front of this phone is actually cool to the touch. And especially when I do take the, the phone out, this part right here where it's going to be pushing that cold air to the back of your phone, it is very chilled. So this thing really does work. It's not just some simple gimmick. But really the only thing on my wish list is for some way if this fan could be battery powered, maybe by like a AA battery or a built-in rechargeable battery, that would be pretty sweet. So you don't have to be wired. And yes, that would probably add some extra weight onto the controller, which by the way, it's not really that heavy at all. It feels really good to hold. Uh, but that's something that I would want to see in the future. It's not a deal breaker, but something I do want. Now you also have the game Sir app that you can download from the Play Store to use with this controller. So when you first open it up, it'll show you some of the more popular games people are playing with this controller. Also, you can go in here and test out the buttons and the thumbsticks to make sure they're all working properly. And if you do change the layout of the A, B, X, Y buttons on your controller, uh, you can go in here and change that in the software of the app so it will correspond with the games that you are playing on your phone. But the most important thing that this app does do is allow you to be able to use this game controller with games that don't typically support these type of controllers like Call of Duty Mobile. So you can launch Call of Duty Mobile from this app and now you'll see this overlay on the screen. Now in the beginning it's a little bit of a mess. Everything is all over the place but um, what you can do is go into the settings of the game that you're in and pull up the touch controls and then now you take that game sir overlay and you can individually move the different uh, controls for the thumbsticks or the buttons on the screen to get them to the right position that you personally like. And so yeah this will take a few minutes but once you get your perfect setup, you can save this. And now every time you launch the, the game, the controls will be able to match the physical controls of the controller. And you can even set up multiple button combinations to be able to work with this overlay as well. But if you don't have the patience for all of this, there is a community browser where people have uploaded their own custom layouts to work with this controller. And you can easily just download them and save them. And you need to pay attention to what phone those people were using in the community browser. But once you find the right one, I find that I did have to make maybe a couple of tweaks, but I was able to have a really good start of a layout to use with this controller. Okay, so now is a good time to just talk about um, how the controller itself is powered. So the controller does run off of the battery of your phone, but it doesn't really drain that much at all. It's a very minimal drain, so it's not something that's going to shave off like 30% of your battery. If you game for an hour, it's something that I don't even notice and don't worry about, so don't be concerned about that at all. But this does support pass-through charging, so you have that USB-C port here on the bottom of the fan but you also have something to the right of it so now you can plug this in down here and then now my phone will go ahead and start charging so yes you can have the fan plugged in at the same time and also have uh, the uh, the pass-through charging plugged in too so you can be getting some cool gaming but also recharging your phone oh and one thing I almost forgot to mention is that you can actually slide this fan to the left and to the right on the back of the phone. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, depending on your phone, the kind of the hot spot might be in a different location. And also the camera bumps for smartphones these days can be kind of big, so you might need to adjust the fan to that. So I like this feature. It definitely gives you a little bit of flexibility to find that right hot spot. And so look, for $99, GameStar has a lot of competition in this mobile gaming controller space, but the customization really helps it stand out amongst everything else because you can customize those physical controls, the overlay controls. You have that fan on the back because if you do have an older phone, that's going to be really clutch for you. And outside of having to take your case off every single time, you pretty much want to use this unless you have one of those super thin cases. Um, this controller is really solid all around. So again, the biggest part for me is just look how easy it is to take my phone out of that. So it's really good. So anyway, I'll leave a link down below for this Game Sir X3 controller if you are interested in it. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts about this. Also, make sure you hit that like button if you like this video and hit that subscribe and notification bell. But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.